Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Uh, I thought you would never ask. Today is, well, it's the weekend. Let's do the whole darn weekend. Saturday, September the 4th is National Spice Blend Day, National Wildlife Day, National Newspaper Carrier Day, National Macadamia Nut Day, or is it Macadamia Nut Day? It's like your big nut for macadamia nuts. Probably just the Probably nut macadamia day. nut day. And National Tailgating Day plus World Beard Day. All right. And uh, Sunday, <laughs> September the 5th, National Cheese Pizza Day, which sometimes I'm in the mood for that. You know, I usually like to have toppings. I like on toppings, them. but there are times that I go, you know what? Toppings would be too much right now. Let's just go with <laughs> cheese. And uh, Sunday is also National Be Late for Something Day, which I celebrate. You celebrate often. Way too often. And I am super excited. Uh, have you ever heard anybody refer to somebody as Young Grasshopper? Yes. Well, I'm going to talk to the real Young Grasshopper from uh, a, a movie from way back in the day. Uh, we have Ramadis Para. Uh, he was actually on a TV show back in the day, a kung fu TV show. Going to be chatting with him coming up in just a bit. Addiction. It's not a pretty thing. Addiction can lead to many problems in your life. Addiction can drive away those who love you the most. And addiction can lead to the loss of jobs, relationships, and even your life. Don't let addiction tear your life apart anymore. Get the help you need to defeat addiction and put the pieces back together in your life. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. They want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. Study discovered that up to 35% of us have had a text conversation while sleeping. Have you ever done that? I don't think so. I while have. sleeping? Yeah. How do you text while Somebody you're asleep? Somebody will send you a message, you wake up, but you don't really wake up when you respond and you go back to sleep and then they, you know, this goes on. I've okay, well, then you're before. not sleeping if you no, responded. but you don't really remember it because you were kind of still sleeping. Conversations, which is mostly gibberish, starts when our phones start beeping or buzzing, prompting our brains to go into autopilot and return the text. It's not always gibberish, though. The study found men usually text about food while women tend to get romantic. So if you ever get a text back in the middle of the night and it's a little romantic or if it's about food... They were probably asleep. <laughs> and another study finds fewer working class Americans are now going to church. So fewer working class Americans going to church now than ever. Well, I don't know if it's ever before, but then in recent past. I think COVID had a lot to do with that. And there's a lot of people that now, I am one of them. It's so convenient to watch church on yep. online. And I'm not saying that I'll never go back to church because I do miss people. But right now, there are a lot of times where I go, you know what? I'm going to do this again. This is really yeah. convenient. This This is easy. Um, But there you go. That is uh, an interesting study. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Do you have a credit card? We'd like to help you get a better credit card. If you don't have any credit cards, we'd like to help you too. At BetterCreditCards.com, we have credit cards that offer different things for different people. Some cards offer points. Some cards are designed to help you build your credit. BetterCreditCards.com wants to help you get a better credit card, no matter what you're looking for. See if we can help you find a better credit card at Better creditcards.com that's better credit cards.com this is your brain on drugs brought to you by time for rehab.com a man fell asleep in his car at the wendy's drive through according to police report boca raton i'm sorry boca news now.com that's who it was uh stephen wolf said he had to work quite diligently to wake him up uh they say he had consumed three rum and cokes at a place called O'Brien's and then parked in the Wendy's parking lot, but he was in the drive-thru. Officers knocked on the window, (laughs) found him. They were knocking for two minutes, uh, telling Wolf to roll down the window. He continued to fumble with the gear shift and then the air conditioner and then finally (laughs) got to the window. When he exited the vehicle and stumbled out, uh, they asked if he knew what day it was. He swayed back and forth. He did not. They could smell the booze. He had a breath alcohol test, and he failed. He did go to jail. Court date is pending. Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of trouble. Don't ever drink and drive. The no. moral of the story is never, ever, 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 ever drink and drive. If you do, you're going to go to jail because that is what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Paramount is suing their insurer for refusing to cover the vast majority of their losses due to pandemic-related shutdowns. Mission Impossible 7 uh, is one of the movies. According to the suit, uh, Chubb, the studio's insurer, that's the name of insurance company, <laughs> they're going to pay a million dollars for COVID losses 
They say the civil authority policy is what they're using. Production was delayed seven times between February 2020 and June 2021. At least six of those delays were due to the pandemic. Paramount had cast insurance policy for the production with a $100 million coverage limit. Such insurance is intended to cover losses exactly like this. Uh, Tom Cruise or director Chris McQuarrie, if they're unavailable due to a sickness, death, or even kidnapping, this insurance kicks in. Well, they even were. Even kidnapping. Wow, that is unavailable. interesting. And they're saying, oh, we'll give you a million bucks. And they're like, no, 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 you're going to give us a hundred million bucks. But so. were the, I mean, it, it sounded like I don't know. Cruise was kind of a diva through the whole thing. I and know. I don't know. I don't know exactly what all's going on, but it sounds like there's some trouble in paradise. Uh, Paramount. Big screen, little <laughs> screen. Brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. At WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com, we help you get ready for all the fun holidays throughout the year with fun, silly, and just plain weird gift ideas for your friends. If you have a friend who has a bizarre sense of humor, we've got a gift for them. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com posts a link to something that will make you smile each and every day. Whether you buy these weird gifts or not, it's worth checking out just for a smile. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com That's WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com Now your scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. Febreze has come up with a new way to fool guests into thinking you're actually a clean house person. A scratch and sniff fabric spray. Using a breakthrough touch-activated scent technology, Febreze is rolling out unstoppable touch fabric spray. As you know, Febreze spray, which isn't going anywhere, you can spray it all you like, but once the ocean Febreze scent dissipates, you're left with the usual smell of wet dog or whatever was there before. So now this new thing is... When you spray the couch and da 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 da, the fresh smell reemerges when it gets touched. So if somebody sits down, mm, it smells lemony fresh okay. in here all of a sudden. So they say, think, so you don't have scratch, to scratch and sniff, take it to the next level. No, but it's the same kind of thing. You you disrupt the surface and you smell it again. That's what they're saying. Huh. Cats prefer a free meal rather than working for their food, according to a new study. <laughs> really? Most animals actually prefer to hunt for their meals, but this experiment shows that our freeloading feline friends <laughs> would rather eat for free. They would open a tray of food, and if they would eat from that rather than retrieve their meal from an easy-to-complete food puzzle. So that's how they did this study. I'm telling you right now, you do the same study with me, I'm going to do it with the cats. <laughs> this food's right here. What's that? I got to go through that maze to get the other food? Eh, I'll what if it right was here. better food in the other one? Yeah, I'm still going to probably do that one. Um, <laughs> there's a new so. dating trend. It's called, it's, it's a weird name. It's called roaching. Okay. So here's why it got its name. I guess cockroaches multiply in hiding. That means that they, you know, have multiple partners in different places, but it's always hidden. So if you have a partner and he or she is a roach, they're roaching you. That means they have other partners you don't know about, okay. and those other partners don't know about you. So if you have a partner who's keep never keeps plans, hey, we were supposed to go out. Yeah, something came up. Something that's always coming up might be another person that they're right. roaching you on. So or wow, roaching with on. They're this, roaching you, with you on. I don't know. I feel as though I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do have a story in the show notes for today at John and Heidi Show dot com. Early to bed, early to rise makes you healthy, wealthy and wise. This is a great quote from Benjamin Franklin at insurancechicken.com. We know a thing or two about great quotes. We help people get great insurance quotes every day. It's super simple and free to find out if we can make you healthy, wealthy and wise. OK, I can't guarantee that. But I can assure you we'd love to help at insurancechicken.com. We want to help you pack out great deals on insurance. That's insurancechicken.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Super excited to visit with a a television and movie legend. I have Radamus Perra joining me, and you might know him as Young Grasshopper. How are you doing, sir? I'm well. Thank you for asking. How are you? Very, very good. Now, how, how old were you when that program came out? And you were a young grasshopper. You were just a kid, right? Yeah, uh, 11 years old. I was in sixth grade when I shaved my head for what eventually became the pilot. It was just supposed to be a movie of the week, but it was well accepted, and so they made a series out of it. And then I was uh, 12, 13, and 14 for the series. Again, you don't know any difference, so it's kind of hard to say, you know, how, how did that change your life? But it certainly had to have changed your life to have that type of success at that age. You know, it was kind of odd. It was in an era before child actors were like superstars, you know, so... Uh, nowadays, you know, get us on TV, they've got a whole mechanism behind them, uh, publicists and photo shoots, and it really wasn't quite like that. I mean, I did some things for, like, you know, some of the Tiger Beat and 16 magazine, but I wasn't really prepared to exploit that uh, in a way. And also, the role of Grasshopper was a very sort of humble, virtually based character, and I guess um, because of I, had, I had a background in Eastern philosophy already through my mom, 
you know, it seemed like it was like a really interesting role to do. It fit me. And I didn't have a big head about it. In fact, I had a shaved head. And that was kind of one of the worst things about it, really, was being in um, both sixth and eighth grades with a shaved head before punk was fashionable. So that was, that was a rough period. I got teased a lot. And, you know, I was not a popular kid because I basically was very different for everybody. With that character and you having a shaved head, anywhere you would go in public, people would have to know, like, oh, hey, that's Grasshopper from Kung Fu. I used to ride the public transportation, the bus, up in L.A. back home from junior high, and I think, yeah, people were like, is that the kid from television? What's he doing on the bus, you know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, so that was a little bit strange, to be honest with you. But at the same time, I also knew that we were doing something, a cultural phenomenon. I mean, it was a, it was a you know, number one hit show. A lot of people, uh, I found out years later, over, over, the entire, you know, over the last 50 years, I found out that many people's lives were affected by this because it was a chance to see a, a person practicing day-to-day terms what it means to apply, you know, spiritual principles in everyday life. And that's what the character of Cain uh, did. We were influencing people to go look, check out Eastern Thought, you know, to do, to practice Kung Fu. People told me over the years, wow, you know, because of that show, I started doing martial arts. It really affected a lot of people, and, and it was a, you know, hugely popular show. That was the one-two combination of uh, that show and, of course, Bruce Lee's movies coming out at the same time from, that he was making in China. So it was, a, it was a real thing. It was a, it, people sat, millions of people watched at the same time every Thursday night. It was quite, quite something. And I'm glad that you're still with us, but the sad thing is you're the only surviving regular cast member from the series, and that's got to be kind of weird, too, right. to see everybody go. What was it like working with that cast? And David Carradine just seemed like an amazing man. He was an enigma. He was a person, I think, who both liked the fame and at the same time tried to reject it and be cool and say, you know, it wasn't, uh, really wasn't his bag as it were, as one might say from the countercultural perspective. He was conflicted, man. He had a tough childhood. He was pushing the boundaries of all kinds of areas of life as an adult, I think. Uh, and he was interesting, man. He was charismatic. He was very intelligent. But he was also, he had something something dark inside that he was working on. In fact, we all have in varying degrees, but his was more maybe on exhibit, perhaps, than in other people. And, of course, uh, that sort of did him in, too, at the same time. Speaking of other members of the program, there are some folks on there that uh, were not regular cast members, but like Harrison Ford and Jodie Foster and Bill Shatner, some of these people that, you know, when you when you see their name on this list, you're going, oh, that's right, they were on there, too. So they were not the huge stars they are today. But uh, do you remember working with them at the time? Well, I remember mostly working with Jody because uh, we both had to have on set school every day that and, and they we would normally shoot my scenes either in the morning or in the afternoon on the same day. Jody and I spent about a week together while she was shooting her episode called Alicia, which was directed by John Badham, who then also went on to become a, a very successful feature film director. A lot of people got their start on that show, as you say. Yeah, it was it was fascinating. And you know that the names that you mentioned, those those three people, Bill Shabner and Jody and, and Harrison, those guys are still alive. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try to get them to, to come to my fiftieth anniversary uh, celebration that I'm trying to get Quentin Tarantino to uh, give me a day at one of his two movie theaters that he owns in L.A. and, and uh, let us do a day-long uh, 50th anniversary event, do some screenings, and maybe have some people like Jody and, uh, gosh, I don't know if Harrison would show up, but maybe Bill Shatter might if he's still, still doing doing events, maybe, and uh, have, uh, and there's other people I can, I can also uh, get all the fact I have, uh, Bobby Carradine and Keith Carradine have both committed verbally to me that they will participate in something if I put it together. So we're shooting for some time next year, which will be this this year since that show came on television. We're going to keep our eyes peeled for that. If that happens, we'll certainly talk about it. And and you're welcome back anytime. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Again, our guest today has been Rodimus Para, also known as Young Grasshopper from Kung Fu. Addiction. It's not a pretty thing. Addiction can lead to many problems in your life. Addiction can drive away those who love you the most. And addiction can lead to the loss of jobs, relationships, and even your life. Don't let addiction tear your life apart anymore. Get the help you need to defeat addiction and put the pieces back together in your life. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. They want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The world's shortest escalator is at a mall in Japan, has a vertical height of just two feet, eight inches, so not even three feet high. (laughs) Why would you even bother? It has five steps, and it takes eight seconds to ride up or down this elevator. So this is the shortest escalator in the world. Did they do it for just for a record? record? Yeah, Yeah. they had to have. I have no idea. All I know is it seems really interesting to me because it is today's fun fact. Now you know. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show.
Do you have a credit card? We'd like to help you get a better credit card. If you don't have any credit cards, we'd like to help you too. At BetterCreditCards.com, we have credit cards that offer different things for different people. Some cards offer points. Some cards are designed to help you build your credit. BetterCreditCards.com wants to help you get a better credit card, no matter what you're looking for. See if we can help you find a better credit card at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Now, RadioTravelGroup.com presents a news headline from somewhere in this world. Dateline France. Emergency services in France got a call about a body in a canal. They went prepared for the worst. Firefighters, police, all kinds of people raced to the scene. They got there. Turns out it was a false alarm and kind of an amusing one at that. Officers got there and what they thought was a corpse turned out to be... (laughs) A mannequin? Mm -hmm, Kind of. It was a doll that was the size of a human. Used for things that... Oh. Yeah. So oh. An inflatable doll. Anyway, they say, uh, hey, the owner can come visit the police station to get that doll. Uh, we have her here. Uh, a couple on mountain bikes discovered the floating mass in the canal, thinking it was a human corpse, called the police. Turns out it was not. Oh, my gosh. So if you are missing a silicone... I wonder if the owner showed up. N- n- no, still not. Uh, they say it was a doll truer than nature that did not lack air. I don't know what any of that means. Anyway, that is a news headline from somewhere in this world. At WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com, we help you get ready for all the fun holidays throughout the year with fun, silly, and just plain weird gift ideas for your friends. If you have a friend who has a bizarre sense of humor, we've got a gift for them. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com posts a link to something that will make you smile each and every day. Whether you buy these weird gifts or not, it's worth checking out just for a smile. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com That's WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com Now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com A Philadelphia cheesesteak shop owner was stabbed in the neck by an employee. Oh. It was all caught on camera, and he said he didn't even know the knife was still lodged in him. Stephen oh my Moulin, gosh. Attacked by a 43-year-old employee, Sean Wacolet, in the kitchen of a place called Leo's Steak Shop. Surveillance video shows Wacolet lunging at his boss from behind, thrusting a 10-inch knife into the boss's neck. With the knife still poking out from his neck, he can be seen fighting back against the employee. He threw some punches. His son grabbed a couple of knives and tried to ward off the employee. Footage shows after the attack, the owner said, his son said, Dad, you have a knife in your neck. And he went to pull it out. He goes, no, no, don't pull it out. And then they went and, uh, you know, did what they could. So the, it sounds like he's going to be okay. The guy was taken into custody. He's worked at the store for a year, charged now with attempted murder, aggravated assault, and a slew of other charges. His bail has been set at $950,000. Well, well, I suppose it was attempted murder. So, yeah. yeah don't let him out. <laughs> He's clearly yeah, there's something got going some on issues. There. I don't know. It's today's Weird News brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh brought to you by BetterResultsAdvertising.com. A man's plan to sell his high-performance sports car was a little bit messed up when, well, the car got a little bit messed up. He flipped the car on a county highway. Single car crash happened at 2 p.m. Monday near North Carolina Highway 11. Spencer Everett of Greenville told uh, police that he pulled onto the highway and then gunned it. So he, like, punched it as hard as he could. But he lost control of the 2020 Stingray Corvette, ran it off the road into a ditch. He was selling the car Tuesday, took the the car out for one last hurrah. He was not injured in the crash. He is charged, though, with reckless driving. So have you ever done that? No. You've never been in an accident? I've been in an accident, but not for reckless driving. Reckless driving, no. Well, then me neither. <laughs> yeah, really. I've done some. I've dumb ridden things. with you. I've done a lot of dumb things. Not quite that dumb, but pretty dumb. It is today's moment of duh. Early to bed, early to rise makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise. This is a great quote from Benjamin Franklin. At insurancechicken.com, we know a thing or two about great quotes. We help people get great insurance quotes every day. It's super simple and free to find out if we can make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Okay, I can't guarantee that, but I can assure you we'd love to help at insurancechicken.com. We want to help you pack out great deals on insurance. That's insurancechicken.com. Time now for Is It a Golf Course or Is It a Rehab Center? Brought to you by timeforrehab.com. Ready, Heidi? 
I'm ready. All right. She's on a roll. She got one right yesterday. Let's see if she can get it right today. Um, Shore Meadows, Tom's River, New Jersey. Is it a golf course or is it a rehab center? Shore Meadows. A rehab center. Shore, re- uh, Shore, Shore Meadows surely is a rehab there center. There we Good go. Job, see? September could be your month. It could be. <laughs> it very well could be. You got the first two wrong, but you could get the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> that is how we play. Is it a golf course or is it a rehab center? Brought to you by timeforrehab.com. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news. And I think this is good news. Comes your way courtesy of bettercreditcards.com. Uh, By the way, we talked about this story. It might have been off the air, though, but it is uh, an amazing story. Here's the headline. A mother fights off a mountain lion with bare hands to save a five-year-old son. Oh, yeah, we did talk about it. A brave mother fought off this mountain lion uh, attacking her five-year-old son. This happened just outside of their home in California. The boy was playing by a tree near the home when a 65-pound mountain lion attacked him. California Fish and Wildlife uh, are the ones that are sharing all of this stuff here. Department spokesperson Patrick Foy said a mountain lion dragged the boy across the yard about 45 yards before the mother came to the rescue. The commotion caused by the attack and the boy screaming alerted the mother who was inside. She ran out and immediately started striking and punching a mountain lion. Managed to fend off the lion and left her son alone. The mom is an absolute hero. She saved her son's life. Uh, No question about the fact that she's a hero. The boy suffered injuries to his head and his neck and his upper torso, but the kiddo is receiving some uh, recovering and is in stable condition at the Children's Hospital in L.A. is where he's getting getting the treatments there. Uh, A mountain lion doesn't stand a chance against an angry angry mama. mama. Well, experts told the TV channel who did this story the attack likely happened because the mountain lion was a kitten and was still learning how to hunt for food. Oh, so they're going. It wasn't looking for easy prey. Wasn't a full grown mountain lion. Otherwise, this might have ended differently. But uh, either way, I bet that kitten mountain lion is probably not going to mess with that lady ever again because it doesn't sound like it ended well for the mountain lion. So there you go. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. I've got a link to that story in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com.